All right, so I want to talk to you all about matrices now. I have three special types of matrices that I put on my test that are kind of like trick problems, but not really. They're kind of, are you paying attention problems? They're there to see the little details. And are you just rushing and your main focus is get out of the test, get out of the test, be done with math, never do math again? Or is your focus more get it done right? Because that's what we need in the real world, right? That's what we need in your, in your job. We don't want you going off into the job and your only focus is to five o'clock to leave that job. We want your focus to be, let me do my job and do my job right. And then when you're off, you're off, yay. But while you're at work, we want your focus to be getting all the little details of getting it right. So I have three matrices behind me. Each one is a separate question. So we're gonna start with this one. The trick to this question is a lot of people will answer x equals 18, y equals 36, and z equals 25. And that's just a little bitty not really paying attention to the fact that z is not one. So really, you gotta divide row three by 25, and z actually equals five. So once you make this new, you get one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, we need that one. 18, 36, 25 divided by five is five. X is 18, Y is 36, Z, one Z is five. Up here, this was five Z equal 25 divided by five. Z equal 5 would be another way to do it. So we've got to be very careful to make sure that you have all 1's in your main diagonal. Okay, so that's the first trick problem I like to give to my students on the test. Second one is this. Here we have X is 1 and we have our 1 for a Y. We're missing two zeros, right? But we're also missing a 1. And you cannot create a one from a zero. There's no number I can multiply by zero to make it end up being one. And I can't just add one to both sides because then I'd add a one Z and a not Z. I can't add one here and add one here and not have them unlike terms. It's gonna screw up our entire equation. So this we're stuck with. So what I want you to do in this situation, I don't want you to go straight to what are the answers. I want you to write your equations out. Let's see what these equations are actually telling us. So we have 1x plus 0y plus 5z equals 3. Basically, x plus 5z equals 3. Second equation, I have 0x plus 1y plus 2z equals 5. Basically, y plus 2z equals 5, right? 0x is 0. Down here, I have 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 1. Well, 0x, 0y, 0z, that's all 0. Does zero equal one? No. That one has no solution. Zero cannot equal one. Okay. The last one, we're gonna do the exact same thing because you're still missing that one. All right? That does not mean no solution. It could mean no solution. Maybe, possibly. We've got to see what the equations come out to. So you've got one x plus zero y plus eight z equals 6. We've got 0x plus 1y plus 7z equals 5. And 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 0. So this last equation, you get 0 equals 0. What that means is there are an infinite number of answers. It does not mean all real numbers. It does not mean every answer works. It just means there's an infinite number of answers. And what we want, instead of just that, because if your boss is like, hey, can you go find out whatever's going on downstairs? 
and you come back to the boss and you're like, man, something's going on downstairs. It could be anything. Your boss is going to go, well, that's why I sent you downstairs to find out. Don't come just tell me it could be anything. Because that's all we know right now is it could be anything. So we want more details because, again, you want detail-oriented when you're going into your job. So what we're going to do is we're going to look back at this first equation. That's x plus 8z equals 6. Your x had the leading one. Solve for it. To solve for x, we'd subtract 8z. x equals negative 8z plus 6. Take your next equation. y plus 7z equals 5. y had our leading one. Solve for y. Subtract 7z. y equals negative 7z plus 5. So we have an equation for x and an equation for y. Those are important. The only thing we're missing now is the equation for z. And what you're going to say is if I knew z, I could find out x and I could find out y. So my z is going to be whatever you tell me my z is going to be. z equals z. So here's your answer. You have a z, you have a y, and you have an x. So if you have infinitely many answers, I want the equations. Because that says, hey, if you can confirm that one detail happened, I can tell you everything else. Not just something's going on, it could be anything. So, no solution, I want the words no solution. There is, you can get that, that, that diagonal of all ones, that's when you give me an entire actual number answers.